Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. 100% biblical. Hello, you guys. I don't know if I've properly actually started this week's vlog yet. So if not, hi. Happy Sunday. Welcome to my week and also happy Easter. We had a very low key day. We didn't even really celebrate Easter today. Um, of course, we kept the real meaning of the holiday on our mind as we went about our days. Just as a family, we had a lot going on and today wasn't the perfect day to celebrate anything. Hopefully tomorrow, that is the plan. Well, we did get to watch Jesus Christ Superstar and it was so stinking good. Did you guys watch it? Because it was great. I feel like John Legend was okay. I'm not really familiar with his work. I was much more familiar with Alice Cooper, Sarah Bareilles, Norm Lewis, and Brandon Dixon, and they were so great. They knocked it out of the park, and it was so enjoyable. I got to watch it with both my parents, so that was quite a highlight. We've spent a lot of Easter's away from home having surgery, so it just felt really good to be home. But now I am back in bed, or should I say my parents' bed, and it is time to go to sleep. So I'm gonna bid you guys good night. Did we end up having an Easter celebration today? No. Did I change my clothes since yesterday? No. But did I manage to get my port accessed and my dressings changed by my visiting nurse? Yes, and that was pretty much all I was able to manage today. It was a difficult day for everybody. When someone in your family is chronically ill, it doesn't just affect one person, it affects the entire family. And when multiple people in your family have a chronic illness, it just gets more complicated. I talk a lot about how awesome my family is and I stand by that I love my family and we try to be as supportive of each other as we can but I'm gonna be honest and I'm not throwing anyone under the bus we don't work very well as a team sometimes and it's hard to always be considerate of each other's needs when they are so opposite of your own and something that I guess we didn't quite consider is that because all but one of my surgeries have all been done out of state I never really had to come straight home and begin my recovery I always had a bit of a buffer period where I started my recovery away from home and came home in fairly decent shape this time has been a lot different and it's really impacting everybody's ability to function in this house and I acknowledge that, but at the same time, it is not my fault. I cannot help it. And I'm feeling a little bit attacked. You guys, no family is perfect. And we are probably the first to admit that we are not. And guess what? I am super difficult to live with. I have an allergic reaction to pretty much everything everybody does. I have a bunch of things that I'm connected to that beep at all hours of the night. And now I am pretty much getting around by slamming into the walls in a desk chair. It's not super conducive to relaxation or good night's sleep. And it's really taking its toll on all of us. The problem really lies in the fact that we are just not handling it well as a team. I'm being honest, we're not. Everybody's frustrated, everybody's exhausted. It's easy to want to just point fingers at everybody else. And so that's the kind of day we've had. I guess we just need to take today. Everybody has voiced their frustrations. Everyone's opinion is really valid in this. And now that we've all kind of calmed down, we're in a better place to put together a plan and try to handle this with a team approach. It's just not something that we're used to and something that we've had to do before, so we're still getting the hang of it. Good morning, you guys. It is Tuesday. I'm whispering because my sister is still sleeping in the room next door, but Today, I have PT. Life is starting up again. 
definitely still in a lot of pain, but I'm looking forward to PT so much because <sighs> surgery is just rough on your whole body, especially when they have to position you certain ways and transfer you. My body is kind of screaming for attention. And they had my hip in a weird position during the surgery. Then I was in a hospital bed, which is never good for your hips. And this brace is quite a bit heavier than the brace I had been wearing. And so whenever I try to stand, the weight of the brace in my leg just pulls on my hip. And so honestly, my hip is where I've been having most of my pain these last couple of days. So fingers crossed Trish is able to fix that problem. She's only allowed to do so much, obviously, after surgery. Um, she's kind of strict guidelines that she has to follow when it comes to manipulations of certain areas. But I have a lot of confidence in her and I don't think my hip has any restrictions. We're gonna have to see. And if it does, we can just focus on my shoulder because my shoulder is popping all over the place too. My body's a nightmare sometimes. Okay guys, we are on our way to PT. We decided to take my dad's car this time because he has the front seat that flips all the way down. So we just put a pillow on the seat and then I can put my leg up, which is really nice. It's definitely not quite as comfortable on my back as my mom's car is. It doesn't recline and it doesn't have much lumbar support, but I mean, if we didn't have this set up, I wouldn't even be able to make it to physical therapy. So I'm pretty thankful. It's gonna be a rough ride though, I can tell already. Okay, we just got home from PT. It was really, really good, but now it is pouring rain and we have to figure out how to get me back inside. Oh boy. Hi. <laughs> so I got in the house, barely. It was not an easy task. Yeah, it's a, um, a little rainy out. I was... It wasn't pretty. Mm -hmm. It wasn't pretty, it did the job. Trish and I talked over some various options for me transferring and getting up and down steps. And I guess what I was doing with getting down on my backside wasn't really the best solution because I was still putting too much weight on the fusion in my back and neck by pulling myself up. So she recommended just kind of having someone really get a good hold on this gate belt that I wear. We call it my harness or my leash. I can link this down below, but just having someone get on my bad side and getting a really good grip and then just kind of one, two, three hop and using them as my other leg. Luckily my sister was here to help with that because I'm not quite sure if we could have just done it with two people. I think it took three people. I did. I would have been a little bit nervous to try just with you, especially in the rain, but I made it in. And I made it into a very lovely package put together by one of my very lovely viewers, Cindy. And she sent me actually, a couple weeks ago, she sent some really fun yarns and stuff that I've had fun playing with. And I've also passed some of it on to Bonnie, who really loves it too. And so I came home now to find another package filled with art supplies so he's just <laughs> enjoying going through them and coming up with ideas for how i'm going to use them oh, i think that these are buttons oh that is cool that one so with that oh there's an elephant button in here <laughs> oh my gosh well i definitely need to use that one but this will come in really handy since I've been making more wearable crochet projects like sweaters to have like a closure. Oh my goodness, there's just stuff coming at me here for collection. What's this? Oh, this is for making like a little purse. Like it's a pocketbook closure. And there was like a bag of handmade greeting cards that she had made. Just absolutely gorgeous stuff. What's this? It's even packaged, that's so cute. This box just has like a bunch of cords and really thin threads and yarns that are really fun. Macrame. Definitely. Ooh, it's so pretty. I think I'll have to have Bonnie show me what to do with some of these like really thin ones. I can't wait 
need to try this stuff out. What I don't use will definitely go to a good home. These are my colors. I love neutrals. Thank you so much, Cindy. This was a really difficult day. Really, really nice thing to come home to. Definitely made my day. Sweet and fun. All right. And here's our little Easter setup that we still have not celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's now Tuesday and we sort still of. have not celebrated Easter. We will. Yummy. On our own time. Say hi. Say hi, Sama. <laughs> Hello, guys. It is Wednesday. Yes, I'm coming to you from a desk chair in my bathroom. It's like midnight and I haven't really been vlogging today because it is the first moment I have been somewhere where I can talk to my camera and not wake someone up. There's just always someone sleeping everywhere. I think it's safe to say that we as a family are not really adjusting very well to my new schedule. Recovery is hard, you guys. I figured that I would be able to support myself on my arms and hands a little bit more. And the frustrating thing is that I can, it's just that I shouldn't. And self-mediating can be really hard, especially when you're dealing with a chronic illness and you're used to pushing through things and finding creative ways to do things. I kind of need to keep checking myself because I have two major fusions going on right now. I have one in my lower body and one in my upper body. And the thing with fusions is you only get one shot at it. And if it fuses in the wrong position, then you are in trouble, my dear, for the rest of your life. So I am trying to be patient with myself and ask for help when I need it. And it's killing me. <laughs> so far, it's been a difficult transition for the rest of my family as well. My mom is super used to helping me out. We're really in tune with each other. My sister and my dad just haven't been through this with me and <laughs> they're not very intuitive about it. That's not really their fault at all. I just end up feeling really frustrated having to walk someone through a bunch of steps when I feel like, ah, I could just do this so easily myself, you know? But that is what I signed up for. I do not regret having the surgeries close together like this. I really do stick with my opinion that one giant recovery is better than two recoveries. I just want to start getting better. If I'm gonna be laid up, might as well take care of it all at once. So I've mostly just been listening to and now watching Outlander. Bonnie got me addicted to it. I listened to the audiobook, the first book. Now I'm watching the first season of the TV show and it's just really fantastic. And I love just the historical nature of it. And of course I love the costumes. And speaking of that, I kinda wanted to show you, I've been working on these little sweater things. Um, they're like sweater vests, I suppose. Uh, I'll definitely insert some clips of them on if you would like to see that. So that's the blue one. And then today I've just been working on this white and kind of silvery gray one. I'm still working on them. I'm still not sure if I love the way that they fall in the front. I just have to get them to drape correctly, but they look so beautiful from the back from what I can tell. It's also hard because I can't stand up and like put them on and really get a good glimpse of them. I don't know, it's just been fun. Because I'm not following a pattern, I've just been letting my hands kind of take over. It's almost like doodling but with yarn and I really enjoyed that. I'm definitely discovering a side of crocheting that I didn't really know before. Yeah, so that's basically what I've been up to. Everyone keeps asking me if I'm going to be listing these on Etsy when I relaunch my Etsy shop. And first of all, my Etsy shop will be relaunching soon. I'm working on it. It's just that I haven't even been able to get into my bedroom since I got home from the hospital. And that's where all my stuff is. So you gotta be a little bit patient with me on that one, but it's happening. Second of all, I would love to list these on Etsy because I don't think that I'm going to need a bunch more sweaters. I already have a ton. But the thing is, that yarn actually really isn't cheap. And so the amount of money I spent on the yarn alone for these sweaters is pretty ridiculous. I don't even want to tell you. I don't know. I would just feel kind of guilty 
charging someone like a hundred dollars for a sweater <laughs> but you know that's how it works i have to buy the yarn to make the things so i don't know i wish i had an endless supply of yarn and i could just give everything away free but that's not reality well it is late and i have been sitting up for just a little bit too long so i am going to say good night to you guys and I will hopefully vlog a little bit better tomorrow, and it won't be in my bathroom, but we will see. This seems to be the only place that I can get a little bit of peace and quiet these days myself. It's really too bad I can't take a bath. Especially because Theramu just sent me those like pain-relieving bath crystals that I really, really, really could use right now. Not great timing. Hello, you guys. <laughs> it is Thursday. I swear that I actually got out of bed today. I just didn't film it. It was actually really nice. My cousin Taylor had an appointment nearby. So she stopped by the house on the way. She brought me these adorable little zebra succulent pots. I'll have to show you when I next move. It's definitely good for me. I sat up in bed for a while and chatted with her and then we moved into the family room and I sat up in my chair for a couple hours. Felt good to do a little bit of socializing and sitting up and have a little change of scenery. Now I'm back here. I'm running some fluids. I'll be honest, I'm not feeling super great. I'm really starting to get a lot of nerve pain in my back and neck. And I know like in my brain that it's because I'm passing the six week mark and that's always when my nerves start to wake up from the surgery. But then of course there's that fear in the pit of my stomach that's like I'm overdoing it with the leg and I'm putting too much weight on my neck and back and I'm not being careful and then I ruin my fusion it's all gonna be my fault. And that's not the case. I know it. I know it in my brain. But I'm being super careful anyway and <laughs> nobody ever died of being super careful. Tomorrow is going to be a very long day. I have an appointment with my pain specialist and I have not seen him in five years because he's a very busy man. And getting an appointment with him is not easy, but he is the best. He's the best in the business for sure. I may not have seen him as a patient in the last five years, but I definitely have seen him in person at various lectures and conferences. Actually, this is the doctor that all the way back five years ago was the one who sent me to my neurosurgeon. So if it wasn't for this guy, who knows where I would be right now. Great guy, amazing doctor. But he's in Rhode Island too, and my appointment's at 7.30 a.m., which means we have to leave quite early. As we all know, I'm definitely a morning person, so that should not be any problem. And then his appointments usually last about five hours. Yeah. That's why his waiting list is so long, because he sits with you for five hours and evaluates you and talks about everything from head, literally, to toe, literally. And then he will put together basically a treatment plan, a to-do list, whatever you want to call it. It is very extensive and it is very thorough and it is exactly what I need right now. So I'm thrilled to have this appointment even though it's going to be rough and it is a little bit soon after everything. We didn't really know what was going to happen when we booked this appointment, but you had better believe I was not going to let this appointment go. We see things very similarly, I think, and he's definitely going to be the guy that I need to talk to about some of the various issues that I've been having lately, and now especially that it involves pain and pain medication. So it's going to be very interesting what he has to say to me. Hoping these fluids run out soon so that I can deaccess my port and get to sleep. But until then, I'm just gonna binge watch some more Outlander. Also, just when you think I can't possibly be any more of an old lady, I get one of these. <laughs> I wonder if I can hold my camera with this. This is nerve wracking. Oh. 
I don't think you need to because you have that stick. Yeah! <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're here and I'm a little stressed because we're sitting in the parking lot and nobody is here at all. Like there's no one at the desk. The doors are all locked. There's nobody here. And oh, I'm just so miserable and I don't really even know what to do. We tried calling them and obviously there's no one at the desk. So. I don't know. I'm very confused. They said my appointment was at 7.30. It's now 8. That's Well, at least the doctor's here. <laughs> okay, never mind. We've just been like trying to figure out what's going on. We're like, did we come the wrong day? Like, we have all this confirmation. But, okay, well. I guess he was running a little late. It's just so weird. Usually there would be somebody in a doctor's Definitely. office, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I thought we were running late, but I guess not. Come okay, on. he just waved us in. All good. Talk to you guys later, false alarm. <laughs> this is so cool. My doctor has this big map up here and all these little pins and flags are different places where his patients have come from. We've even got some in Alaska and Hawaii. Definitely represented up here in the Northeast. A lot of people from California. Yeah. This doctor is seriously the best. He even helped to carry my entire like pregnancy pillow in here. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I've got my own little setup in here now. Hello guys. I am still in my appointment, believe it or not. It is now like 12.30. My appointment started at 7.30 and I don't even know if we're halfway done. I was not kidding when I told you he literally starts from your head and goes to your toes. We have talked about absolutely everything and it's amazing. He has so much knowledge and insight. He knows EDS like the back of his hand and I think that we have come up with a lot of great plans and solutions so far, even though we haven't even gotten to talking about pain yet. It's just a lot to process for sure. We're taking a little break now. He said that I make him need caffeine. <laughs> but I'm super comfortable because, look, I got my whole setup. He insisted that I bring all my pillows in from the car and get comfortable. So here I am making myself at home. I know that I shouldn't technically play favorites with doctors, but if I could pick a favorite. But like I said, I mean, it's a lot to take in. A lot of information being passed and potentially new diagnoses, new medications, new tests. It's a lot, but we definitely really see eye to eye, which is nice. Oh, and by the way, look at this so if you were thinking oh poor christina can't wear pants for a month what is she going to do without her elephant pants elephant skirt Whew. i could just fall asleep here okay guys believe it or not we're just leaving 
after like six and a half, seven hours. It was an amazing appointment. Like I said, it was just a lot to take in, but in the best way possible. He's just like so in touch with reality and with my values and my goals and he's just amazing and so sweet. I mean, I can't even tell you. He was like patting my back and hair and like giving me hugs. Like he was just really, really amazing. And the greatest part is that we're gonna get to go back every few months. He's going to try to make room in his schedule to see me and my sister, which is really nice. It's not easy to get an appointment with him. So I really, really appreciate how much he wants to help out. He also gave us a name of another primary care physician who he really, really likes and is familiar with complex cases, EDS, and seems to work extra, extra hard for her patients. She's a concierge physician, which I don't really know too much about that. I do know that we have to pay, but I don't think it's an absurd cost for the amount of care that she provides the patients. I, I'm going to have to look up her name and what she does a little bit more, but she sounds like she might actually be a perfect fit for me, so it's kind of crazy that it seemed like everyone was closing their doors on me and now I have all of these different options and leads to look into. <laughs> but now I'm incredibly tired. I'm just like squished in here from <laughs> the pregnancy pillow like on top of me. I am going to need quite a nap after this one. But he totally went out of his way to make me comfortable. I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Well, today was a day. I'm still totally trying to process everything. I'm going to keep you guys updated for sure on what we talked about, but I think a lot of it's going to have to wait until I get my visit notes. Um, my mom took notes, luckily. I'm not a note taker. I need to like focus on the conversation in the moment. Otherwise, I just don't recall anything. <laughs> so it's kind of great. She's my scribe. My family is ready for bed and everyone's annoyed with me talking. <sighs> I think it's time for me to go. To... So I wish you guys a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey! Oh boy, that's super zoomed in. Hold on. Wrong way. Hey! <laughs> it's Saturday night for me. I just got done filming another video for you guys. This one was my top five favorite Lush products for dealing with chronic illness. I had a lot of fun filming it. It's something I've been wanting to film for quite a while, but I've just never gotten around to it. I've had things set aside for a really long time, but because we've just been all over the place, I never had all five products in the same place at the same time. So I'm super glad I got that filmed. Now I'm kind of exhausted, but that's okay. I am in a little bit more pain today than I have been. I am going to just chalk that up to the ridiculously long day that I had yesterday and how much time I spent in the car. That was kind of a killer. <laughs> but overall, I do still feel like I am moving in the right direction with my recovery. I think that the biggest part for me now is all mental and it's just forcing myself to continue to rest. After surgery, you're in pain. All you wanna do is lay there and sleep. But after a certain amount of time, I start to go batty on bed rest. I just want to get out. And so I just have to continually be reminding myself this isn't something that you're supposed to push through. This is something that you're supposed to rest through so that you don't fuse weird. Obviously, our goal is for the fusions to take and everything to be positioned correctly. I have to learn 
to stay still. That is why I'm demoted again to the full thoracic brace because I can't seem to remember not to try to twist. I'm just thinking so much about taking the weight off my knee that I keep putting all of my weight on my arms. It is my job right now to heal. And in the long run, I am responsible for the outcome. So it's an important job. Let me know down in the comments if you stink at this just as much as I do. Because I know as EDS patients, our natural instinct is to just push through everything. I'm just reading through all these notes and comments from yesterday. I got a lot to do, which is great. I love homework. I love it when doctors give me a good list. Things are going to be changing a lot. Everything is going to be changing. There is nothing that's going to be the same. So you guys are going to get to come along on a very interesting journey with me. I'm excited. This is going to be good. I feel like finally we have a doctor who's willing to look at this as a big picture and as a full body and he is willing to work very very closely with my PT. He called her like within five minutes of me leaving yesterday to consult with her about everything. What more can I ask for? I know that the care that I receive is the optimum care and I just hear from so many of you guys every day who are not in the position to receive this kind of treatment and it makes me feel extremely blessed a little bit guilty but mostly motivated to just spread awareness and get myself out there and talk to doctors and talk to patients and try to make connections that is the only way that this is going to work everybody in the world cannot come to see these few doctors it's just not realistic what we need is just more doctors who are willing to train and to understand and to listen and it is my number one goal in life to help to facilitate that in any way that i can but first i have to take care of myself so i am going to end both this vlog and this night here Thank you for coming along on another week with me. You guys are wonderful. I love seeing all of your comments. I'm continuing to slowly make my way through answering them. If you like this video, you can show me with a thumbs up. If you're new around here and you want to see more videos, you can hit the subscribe button. And I will see you guys next week. Good night and goodbye.